Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Today it's another installment of Big Ideas and Little Known Facts about Connectors with John Sandy of TTI and Dan Venuto of Molex. Hello and welcome to our podcast, Big Ideas and Little Known Facts in the World of Connectors with TTI and Molex. Today we are talking to Doug Mauder, Business Development Manager at TTI and discussing how it all starts in engineering. And we will talk about how to bring value to our joint engineering community. Hey Doug, welcome to the podcast. Uh, Glad to have you on. Uh, Why don't we start by giving our viewers and listeners a little bit of an introduction of who Doug Mulder is and what your background looks like. Sure, John uh, and Dan, thanks for having me on the pod. Um, So I started out um, about 30, a little over 30 years ago with a very small distributor, a regional distributor uh, in inside sales, uh, which was very helpful because I got to do all kinds of different jobs um, because it was a small company. So you really did everything from sales to PM to warehouse, cable assemblies, all that kind of stuff. Um, and from there, I moved to field sales with that same company, uh, eventually moved down to Atlanta and uh, did field sales there and sort of helped restart that branch uh, in Atlanta uh, and then did area management, branch management, and then had an opportunity to move uh, to Florida and start a branch for a distributor in Florida that they didn't have a presence in Florida. So I moved down to Florida and uh, worked on, you know, I was the branch manager, but also, you know, half of this field sales force also. So did that uh, for a long time, eventually uh, grew up into that role to be a district manager for the Southeast um, at that distributor. And then uh, managed uh, a connector manufacturer as a supplier business manager for three years uh, before moving over to the TTI to take this uh, role as business development manager. Thank you, Doug. And just to let the audience know, when I was a young uh, RDSM at Molex, I just started with a company. One of my uh, branches that I covered or one of my regions that I covered was Doug's region as previous distributor. So, you know, it was great to get to know Doug and uh, really happy he we were working together again. But Doug, what what uh, why did you come to TTI and what was attractive about the company and uh, the culture here? So, um, you know, obviously um, TTI, you know, sort of competing with them for for many years, uh, you know, nothing but respect for the organization. Um, and, you know, calling on customers for 30 years, I don't think I ever had a customer tell me they had any issues with TTI. I don't remember any, you know, uh, complaints at all. So that was certainly a factor, just knowing what a great reputation they had. Um, obviously, uh, you know, their ownership uh, and, you know, uh, their partnership and ownership with Berkshire Hathaway, um, and then just the fact that I felt like what they felt they wanted this role to be lined up really good with um, what my skill set was and, you know, where I was in my career. You know, I just really wanted to come somewhere to uh, make as big an impact and make a difference um, as much as possible and enjoy working with uh, customers and salespeople. So uh, for me, it was, you know, a a good fit for me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Doug Mordo when you're not working? What do you like to do? When I'm not working. So I have a couple uh, couple of kids. Uh, One just graduated from college and one's uh, still in college. Um, um, Avid um, sort of health exercise nut, um, triathlons, um, love golf, uh, love to cook. Um, so um, really all kinds of things. So uh, usually pretty active all the time. Um, uh, kind of a coffee snob, I guess. Um, so I'll ask people to stop so I can get a good cup of coffee somewhere. Um, but yeah, so since my kids are you know out of, out of, out of the house now, it um, gives me a little more time to go back and revisit some of those things I did as a, as a kid and get to do a, a lot more of them. So uh, that's been uh, a fun experience. No, thank you for sharing that, Doug. And can you tell us a little bit about what a BDM does 
at TTI and how it brings value to Molex, TTI, and our customers? Yeah, sure. So obviously the, the B and the D stand for business development. So, you know, I spend 98% of my time working on trying to find uh, applications and uh, design so that we can help the customers with what their new products are going to be. Um, what's nice is I, you know, I get to work directly with the field sales team to help identify customers, um, how we can bring value to them. And since I'm, you know, very focused and, and, um, you know, just have Molex, I'm able to really dig down and, and look at really all the Molex product and what the customer does, uh, and figure out how we can help them. Um, I, you know, I kind of, my, my North stars, I just try to ask myself, you know, if I was an engineer at this company, would I want to know about this, this product or this service? And then also if I was a field salesperson at TTI, would getting this information uh, from the BDM, you know, help me bring value to my engineering customers and community. So that's kind of how I go about it. A quick question, Doug, on the products. If, if, if I'm an engineer right now, what's the biggest challenge when it comes to understanding what's out there, what's available, what's new, um, and how do we solve that in, in using you as a, as a vehicle for getting that information to them? Well, I mean, there's, you know, like anything, um, there's more than any engineer can possibly try to proactively know, right? They're trying to do their job. They got a lot of technologies, a lot of issues, a lot of problems they're trying to solve. There's no way that they can also be, you know, a expert on all the products that are being released by Molex and all the services and all the changes that are happening in the industry. So, um, you know, I think it's our job to be that, you know, product expert, that industry expert, um, and just be a uh, engineering resource for them or a technology resource for them so that um, when they have issues and we know what their product is, that we're anticipating what they're interested in and trying to, you know, with a regular cadence, show them products and services from Molex and TTI that we think really bring their value, brings them some value that they would want to know about and not, and most of all, not wasting their time, right? They don't have uh, time to uh, be wasted by us and, and we don't want to waste our own time. So, um, you know, that's, I think, very important that we're being very thoughtful for what we engage with them on and what we show them. And Doug, I'm just curious, what has the reception been from the engineers that you're working at, at our uh, customers and OEMs? Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, they've been very receptive, I think, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, they are realizing because of what we're showing them and what we're talking about that we've done our homework. Um, and we've, you know, we've looked at what they do, um, what problems they might have, what products they're using. Um, so they've been pretty good about engaging with us. And then usually once we start engaging with them, uh, they see uh, our knowledge base and uh, our competency on the technical aspects. And then the relationship just improves from there. What is it about TTI that uniquely positions them to help so well with engineering and engineering customers? Well, you know, one of the things that's great about TTI is we do have a good number of commodities on our line card. So we're um, really able to see sort of a good overview of what we're already selling the customer, what kind of technologies, what kind of products they're using. So we have sort of a pretty decent picture of, you know, what they use in their products, along with, you know, doing some good research, you know, we're, we're able to feed them products and services that they're truly interested in. And then also, you know, if they're buying, let's say a flat flex connector from Molex, you know, it's, you know, I would say it's even our responsibility to show them, Hey, here's the Molex Primo flex jumpers that go with that versus, you know, just being okay with, Oh, they bought that connector. That's great. We, we shipped it on time. Everything worked out. You know, we're there to try to help them, solve problems and bring value. So it's, it's up to us to, you know, do that extra work to show them things that they may not even know exist and that are in the marketplace. And ultimately, Doug, obviously it's, it's trying to verbalize what does this uh, benefit bring to our customers? What is the real value there? 
Well, the, you know, the value is a couple of things. One, you know, we're buying all the NPIs, right? So we buy everything that Molex releases, right? So we're we're bringing the new technologies out, which may or may not be useful for the, that engineer at that particular time. But we are putting that newer technology on the shelf. We're letting them know about the value added solutions from Molex, whether it be printed circuit solutions and copper flex and silver flex, bus bars, uh, RF assemblies, what have you. Uh, and really the benefit is we we're making the job easier for them because they're coming to us or we're exposing them to products and services. Then they can have us do the legwork and do the homework and bring them solutions versus them trying to figure that out online or on someone's website, which can just be daunting if you're trying to do five or six different uh, applications where if they come to us, they, you know, we, if we don't have it at TTI, the expert to figure it out, we have tons of engineering resources and experts at Molex to help us along. So, you know, I don't feel, uh, and I haven't ex experienced any opportunity or design issue where we couldn't figure out a solution, or if we didn't have a solution, we couldn't then steer them in the right direction to get their uh, problem solved somewhere else. You know, as you're visiting uh, customers and you're visiting engineers and OEMs, what technologies have you noticed from Molex that engineering was not aware that Molex provides? That that That's a good question, Dan. So that's been kind of the most fun and interesting part of calling on the customers. Um, you know, we have a ton of interconnect product from Molex to show them, but what a lot of customers don't realize, and they, you know, they think, oh, Molex is a a connector manufacturer, you know, they don't realize all of the other uh, products and services that Molex has. Again, like I talked about with the bus bars and the ARF assemblies and the thermistors uh, and thermistors assemblies and copper flex, they don't realize all of what Molex is. So, you know, I have to give them a little bit of an education on, yeah, you know, Molex used to be a, a connector manufacturer and now you know, Molex is really a technology company. So it changes the conversation from, hey, what interconnect are you using to, hey, just tell us about your whole product and what you're doing and what problems you're having, and then finding the right uh, possible solutions with Molex versus just, just talking about connectors only. Yeah, Doug, I think you bring up a really good point there. And I think it's something that is getting out there and that people are becoming more aware of it. But could you just expand a little bit more now on, on the process as you go into engineering and now we're not really necessarily just looking at parts, but we're looking at solutions and, and how does that change the conversation and how does that change the, the value we bring into the customer? Yeah. So, you know, when we go in and we're, and we're, we're talking, certainly, you know, the conversation may or may not start at the interconnect level. Uh, it may, you know, may start at an assembly level or what have you, but instead of talking about really components, we're talking about solutions or processes um, you know, for example, you know, most, I would say most engineers don't realize that, you know, Molex does reballing and interposers, um, for product obsolescence. Um, so we're really in there talking about, instead of from the connector application up, we're talking about their product and where they see it going and what issues they have moving it down to the components versus starting at the components and, and, and talking up. So it's just a much bigger conversation and uh that has a it's a lot more nuanced there's a lot more to discuss um you know sometimes there's some education to do um and lots of times on a very regular occasion you know we have that initial meeting and then the second or third meeting you know i'm getting on a conference call with the engineer myself and engineering or uh, product management from molex to go through not just the product, but also Molex's capabilities and what have you. So it becomes, um, again, a lot more of a value add solution discussion versus, a, hey, I need this type of connector. Give me that type of connector, and then you move on down the road. So, um, you know, honestly, it's 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 a, that that part's a, a very enjoyable because you're really you're really making a difference with those conversations and those applications. Yeah, that's a really good point, Doug. And uh, it's very interesting how the whole process has developed over the last three or four years from that connector uh, supplier to solutions provider. So I think that's really good. Now, talking about coming years and what's happening, 
Can I ask you for some final thoughts or inputs for the audience, uh, just to see what sort of things you're expecting to see in 2023, the rest of it, and what they should be looking out for? Yeah, so obviously that you know the supply chain's gotten a lot better, right? We don't have as many supply chain issues. We don't have as many uh, parts on allocation, so that's a lot better. Um, so what I'm seeing is, you know, the the OEM customers are releasing and working on lots of new designs because they can get the products uh, to make these new designs if they get orders. Um, you know, in 2022, you know, they might have been working on some designs, but they couldn't launch that product into the marketplace because they just couldn't get the the products to build their products. So it kind of didn't. There was no reason to really launch it out into the marketplace. So um, the engineering activity now is is significant. Um, you know, we have a you know the privilege because we do a lot of business with a lot of great OEMs that we have lots of contacts. Um, so you know we have the privilege and and responsibility to try to use those those connections the best we can to bring as much value. Um, so I think we have to continue to uh, engage with those engineering uh, customers and try to grow our influence and our knowledge base of the engineering community at our customers um, because they are very active right now and you know they're going to need help everybody's still you know there's lots of hiring going on but customers are still pretty lean in some areas so they have you know engineers working a lot of uh, different things so um, you know we need to be a resource for them to make their lives easier so that they can get the job done for their for their companies you know, you may had some comments about the supply chain, but one of the things from Molex perspective here is, you know, we really enjoy working and being partnered with TTI because you carry a, uh, what I want to call war chest of inventory. And how does that inventory position help you as you're working with these engineers specifically, you know, when you get back to the uh, connector designs? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you can always, um, save more money in engineering than you can in purchasing, right? If they design in products that are available that are, you know, maybe have uh, um, a couple of different sources or, or or there's lots of, there's inventory in the, in the, in the channel. So, um, you know, making sure when possible that our customers are designing a product that is available uh, on, on the shelf with what we have um, can really make life a lot easier for, for purchasing and supply chain. Um, and, you know, we're obviously more than happy to go put inventory on uh, based on their program coming to market. Um, you know, one thing great about TTI since I've been here is anytime we're working on new stuff and, you know, the cust the customer plans to to launch it out in, in eight weeks from the final design being completed, um, but we're not going to have that kind of time. Uh, to get it on order, you know, we'll get it on order before uh, the customer even is requesting to place orders just so we can get that supply chain um, uh, and inventory in place. Um, and like you said, the the amount of uh, SKUs and dollars of inventory we have is is super impressive and, um, you know, I think brings lots of value uh, to the supply chain and the, and, the, and the buyers. The engineers, you know, always they're there to design the product and 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 solve problems. They're a little less concerned about how much inventory we have and a little more concerned about what we can do to help them out. Um, but the good news is that the buyers and uh, and uh, program managers that are that they work with care a lot about how much inventory we have. So it works well. Hey, Doug, great stuff. Appreciate it very much. So that was Doug Morda from uh, TTI, Business Development Manager. And we'd like, again, to thank you for joining Dan and I on this podcast and appreciate the time you spent with us. Thank you. Enjoyed it. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.